Hey guys, what is going on? It's David here from Scissor Explosion. And today I'm going to do a little different video. I want to uh, show you guys some of the top decks that are topping in Japan. Uh, this is a, a tournament that took place on September the 16th. And there was 1,000... Uh, 1,235 masters there so a lot of players were at this tournament and uh, this is kinda cool because usually we don't look at Japan's uh, Japan's lists for their decks but Japan is on the same exact rotation as we are so um, this is kinda like a uh, travel in a time machine see what some of the next hot top decks are going to be so uh, let's take a look at these. Uh, let's start at, let's see, there's some really interesting ones. Let's start at number 10. Um, but as you can see, there's some really cool decks. Malamar and Giratina. There is a Bacephalon and a Ganadel. Um, Buzzwell, like, like Alolan Ninetales. And this is the new Alolan Ninetales, the fairy type. She's going to be really amazing. Uh, if you don't know what she does, we will get into that here in just a moment. But yeah, there are some really good decks here. We got Buzzwell, Buzzwell Zork. We got Buzzwell Lycanroc, Buzzwell Ninetales, and we will start with this Buzzwell Ninetales. Or this uh, Zorark Ninetales, I'm sorry. So Zorark Ninetales, uh, you ran your basic 4-4 four, four Zorark line. Most most Zorark decks do run that. Then you run two of the Beacon Vulpix, if it will load. Let's see, is it going to load? I don't know. If it, there you go. Beacon Vulpix. They're water types, like all the Vulpixes are. Even the new Vulpixes that come out in Lost Thunder will be water types, because they don't become fairies until they evolve. So, um, we they ran two of these Alolan Ninetales, and this is the thing. I think this card is going to be something that defines the meta. It's going to be a card that shakes up the meta big time. It's, it may not be the best card in the format, but it's going to be a card that you're going to see in a variety of decks. I mean, so many decks are going to be running this card. I'm even planning on running it, and as soon as Lost Thunder comes out, if I don't pull these in booster boxes, I'm getting four of them ordered, you can believe it. But this Alolan Ninetales, stage one, 200 HP, weakness to metal, two retreat cost, and you also have that nice resistance to si or darkness, which is really good. But the ability is Mysterious Lead. Once during your turn, when you play this card from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon, you can search your deck for up two item cards, reveal them, and, and put them into your hand. Then shuffle your deck. Okay, at first glance you may think, eh, it's alright. But take a closer look at it. Like, Stage 2's will love this deck. Uh, anything with Disruption will love this deck. Uh, will love this card. Uh, you'll be able to evolve your Vulpix and search for that choice band you need. Search for that, um... Search for that... Let's see, they ran like, uh, search for Ultra Balls you need, Nest Balls, Rescue Stretchers, Fill Blowers, uh, even, they run Energy Lottos in here, uh, Counter Gain is even a really cool card that's coming out. It's a Pokemon tool, and it says, as long as this, uh, as long as you have more card prize, uh, prize cards remaining than your opponent, the attacks of, uh, the Pokemon this card is attached to costs colorless less. And that's probably in here for the Alolan Ninetales herself, because her attack takes Fairy Colorless, and you can attach a uh, fairy energy, or I guess they run rain one rainbow and four of the unit fighting dark and fairy. Um, attach one of those and then use Alolan Ninetales to search out the counter gain or choice band or whatever you need at the moment. Attach it to that Alolan Ninetales and then attack with fairy, um, what is the attack called? Uh, white Silver Wind, which does uh, some decent chip damage, 70 damage, that would be 100 with a choice band. Uh, this stack does 30 damage to one of your uh, opponent's bench Pokemon. So a little little chip damage, basically a weaker version of uh, of a Glaceon GX's attack. Um, and then you have Sublim Sublimination GX, which is really cool since uh, we can see ahead in the meta and see that Buzzwool is still going to be good. Uh, Bacephalon is going to be an upcoming Ultra Beast. Uh, this attack does, uh, if your opponent's active Pokemon is an Ultra Beast, it is knocked out. So uh, it's an automatic knockout. Uh, you can take out a full, a fully charged Buzzwool with no damage counters on it with this GX attack. Pretty good, and you could potentially do it for one energy if you have that counter gain. So yeah, this is a really, really cool deck. Uh, let's go through the deck list, the rest of the deck list, real quickly. Uh, we've got four Zerua, four Zorark, two Alolan Vulpix, two Alolan Ninetales GX, the Fairy from uh, SNM 7B. Um, we have one Rockruff and one Lycanroc GX for that uh, Bloodthirsty Eyes plus Dangerous Rogue is really cool. 
and we are running those uh, fair, er, uh, fairy fairy fighting and darkness energies plus the rainbow energy in order to get that rolling as well one ditto prism star this card is going to be in a lot of evolution decks as well um its ability it all has an ability it says whatever evolution uh once on your turn you can put a stage one evolution card from your hand onto this pokemon to evolve it you can't use this ability on your first turn or the turn this pokemon was put into play so basically it's like having uh five zeruas in your deck or an extra rock ref or an extra vulpix you could evolve it into anything any stage one pokemon you can't use rare candy and evolve that's uh that's that's kind of unfortunate but that's all right uh, even in stage two decks it could be useful like say gardevoir you could evolve it into a curlia you could evolve it into uh nine tails i i i think that's going to be a really good deck too alone nine tails in gardevoir uh stage two decks are just going to love this alone with nine tails it's going to be so good i mean it's just super consistency that you can't that no other pokemon can boast you can search your deck for a rare candy if you already have a Gardevoir in hand. If you already have a rare candy in hand, search your deck for an Ultra Ball. Get that Pokemon into play that you need. Rare candy into Gardevoir. Rare candy into Decidueye. Even a Decidueye deck got a top cut spot here. Let's see. It is a Decidueye Ninetales, just like I was saying. Uh, yeah, let's look at that deck. It's not in the top ten, but let's take a look at that deck real quick here. Uh, we got the 4-4. The four, four. They just played four Rallets, four Decidueyes. And then three Alolan Vulpix and two of the Alolan Ninetales. And um, they use that to search out their rare candies, their timer balls. Uh, even enhanced hammer, net balls, nest balls, all of those. All Look at how many items they played. They played the, let's see, the Force into the Three Lily, uh, Three Elms Lecture, Three Guzma, One Acerola. But then after that, it is all item cards. And that is what this Vulpix and Ninetales are really, really good at. They even played a 1-1 line of Swampert, which is pretty cool in here. Um, yeah, this is a really cool deck idea. I think I think there are some really cool and innovative decks that are going to be coming out in uh, Lost Thunder. I think it's really going to shake up the meta. But anyway, let's go on to the next deck, which is this Grand Bull deck. This deck is really interesting as well. Uh, we've got a 4-4 Snubble Grand Bull line. Now this Grand Bull has an attack called Pennyless. For a fair, single fairy energy does 30 damage plus. If you have no cards in your hand, this attack does 130 more damage. That's 160 for one energy, which is pretty awesome. Attach a choice band and you're hitting there for 190. You're taking out things like Buzzwool and uh, with, let's see, taking out things like Buzzwool, you're taking out things like uh, Rayquaza GX. And as you can see, there is no Rayquaza GX in the top cut of this uh, of this tournament. It doesn't look like there's any, even in the top 32, no. No Rayquaza at all to be seen. But you can take out those Bacephalons because I believe they have 180 HP. Uh, you can take out your uh, your Buzzwools. Uh, you can't hit quite hit the Ninetales or the Lycan Rock. But uh, you can even take out like this Alolan Executor because that deck's even doing very, very good. But anyway, back to that deck. Uh, See, they also ran a 2-2 Slugma Macargo line. Macargo just showing off his his uh, his thing there with that smooth over ability, showing how important he is to a lot of decks. Plus a three three copies of Orangaroo as well. The uh, the Instruct Orangaroo from Sun and Moon base set. Uh, once during your turn before you attack, you can draw to you have three cards, which is really really good. Uh, good combo with the Macargo and the Orangaroo, and then they also run that Ditto Prism Star I was just talking about. Which is, I, I really think that's going to be an amazing card, guys. Um, I'm really betting it's going to be great. So that's it for the Pokemon line. No Tapu Lele. So this looks like it could be a Shrine deck. Uh, yeah, there's three Shrine of Punishments right there. <coughs> yeah, Shrine of Punishment. The, uh, if you guys haven't picked up these Shrine of Punishments yet, they're they're going up in price. Uh, they're at nine dollars right now as a single price. But uh, yeah, that might be something you might want to invest into. Uh, four Apricorn Maker, three Guzma, one Tatan Liza, one Diantha, four Ultra Ball, four Nest Ball, just a whole bunch of items and uh, and supporters because with without the uh, without the addition of Tapu Lele in here, which they don't want to, it's the Shrine deck. Uh, you need all those cards. Uh, two Lost Mixers. Lost Mixers are really cool. <clears throat> New item card coming out of Lost Thunder. Put two car. Uh, put two of your hand cards. They they were that weird. Uh, I'll just say it how I want to. <laughs> put two cards in your hand 
uh, into the Lost Zone, then draw a card. If you can't put two cards into the Lost Zone, you can't use this card. So uh, this is going to be really good for those Jump Luff decks. I don't know if anybody's, if any of y'all have been, been hearing about those, but they're calling it the new Night March. They're calling it Lost March. Um, it does more damage for each uh, for each card in the Lost Zone. So Lost Mixer is pretty cool. They use that for a little draw power, plus it's in their hands down. Probably for their Orangaroos, so they can get off their Macargo Orangaroo combo. Uh, let's see, we've got uh, four rescue stretchers. That's quite a bit, but I bet you need them to get all those Pokemon back. Um, one mysterious treasure, one energy recycle system, one field blower, three choice span, four body or one bodybuilding dumbbells. Since uh, your main attacker is a stage one, plus you got that mech cargo if you need it on there. Three shrine of punishment, and to end it off, seven fairy energies. This is like a really interesting deck, and with so many people interested in all these shrine decks, uh, if if you're one of those people, this would be a deck I would look into, for sure. Alright, let's see, what is next? We got a Buzzwool Lycanroc. Buzzwool is making a comeback, it looks like. Right now in the meta, we don't see a whole lot of Buzzwool. If there's anything Buzzwool, it's baby Buzzwool. Uh, with that uh, trash Lanch Garbodor. Um, let's see, Buzzwool GX, we all know what Buzzwool does. With that Jet Punch attack and the Knuckle Impact, plus Absorption. Yeah, it's really, really strong. And then we got one baby Buzz here, uh, really good in the meta right now, and he may still keep on keep on trucking along with his Shrine deck. Uh, right now, everybody's playing Buzzwool Garbodor, and uh, not gonna lie, it's a really really strong deck. It's hard to take down because all the Pokemon in the deck are worth one prize, so they're taking two prizes to your one. Two copies of Rockruff and Lycanroc GX. Three Tapu Cocos with the free retreat and the flying flip to put some ping damage on your opponent. Uh, you got one Diancy Prism Star. Of course, you wouldn't run a Buzzwool deck without Diancy. Uh, Fighting did lose a lot of its buffs in this last uh, in this last rotation, but uh, Diancy is about the only one they've got left, uh, unless you count the Beast Energy Prism Star. Uh, one Shuckle GX. This is a card I've seen popping up in a lot of decks lately. Uh, it's a basic Pokemon, 170 HP, with the ability Protection Pot. Prevent all damage done to this Pokemon by attacks uh, from your opponent's Pokemon that have two or less energy attached to them. That means things like Zorark with the Double Colas attached will not be able to deal any damage to this Pokemon. Pretty good wall. It's forcing them to attach an extra energy in order to KO Shuckle. Um, really, really cool. Really disruptive attack. And it sounds more useful, or it sounds less useful than it really is. It's, it's a very useful ability. Then you got the attack triple poison. Your opponent's active Pokemon is now poisoned. Put three damage counters uh, for this poison. And then wrap GX for 40 damage. One colorless energy. Your opponent's active Pokemon is now paralyzed. Uh, it's not too bad. Uh, the GX tech is is kind of bad, honestly. I think I would rather use uh, uh, Buzzwool's Absorption GX as the GX option. But I guess you do have that uh, GX tech if you need it. Two copies of Lele GX and one Orangaroo from Sun and Moon for the instructability. Then you've got all these supporters, uh, t four Kakuis, three Guzmas. I guess they're using the Kakuis. Now the thing about Dilla extra damage, since you are losing things like uh, like Strong Energy and uh, your Regirock EX is gone as well. Three Guzmas, two Cynthia's, four or two Lilies, one Tate and Liza, one Judge. Then we've got uh, four Ultra Ball, three B String, two Nest Balls, two Escape Ropes, one Rescue Stretcher. One energy recycle system, three choice band, and two Brooklet Hills. And then for the energy count, eight fighting, four DCE, and one Beast Energy Prism Star. Really, really good card. I like Beast Energy a lot, and I play it. And If I ever built a Buzzwool deck, I would definitely play it in there. But anyway, guys, let's get on to the next one. And this one is pretty interesting. This is a Buzzwool and uh, Ninetales deck. And this is the Ninetales I was talking about that was in uh, that Zorark deck we had. And I think it has a little more use in this deck because you can search out your B-strings whenever you need them. And uh, you just evolve your, your Ninetales, or evolve your Vulpix into the Ninetales and then attack or search your deck for those B-strings exactly when you need them. And you can get two B-strings, charge up two Buzzwolves in a turn, and then you're golden. I mean, it's hard to come back from that for your opponent if you are on the right track. Uh, yeah, Buzzwool GX we just talked about. Two Baby Buzzwool one Deancy Prism Star, 
three low on Vulpix. Now, the other cool thing about this is that you can use Brooklet Hill, and, it ha and Vulpix has so much synergy. Uh, just like Octillery did in the last format, you can search your deck for Buzzwool, you can search your deck for a low on Vulpix with your uh, Brooklet Hills and get those Pokemon to play and have them ready to evolve whenever you need them. If you get two Vulpix on the bench, God, that's just, that's that's so bad for your opponent. It, it, should your opponent target down your Buzzwolves that are getting charged up, or should they target down those Alolan Vulpixes that are just threats sitting on the bench ready to attack? Um, two Ninetales, two, three Tapulele GX, and one Orangaroo. Then we've got the four Cynthias, two Guzmas, two Judges, Two Lizias. Now Lizia is a card that's really interesting, and I've been talking about this card to my uh, to my friends and asking them because they play Buzzwool if they would like this in their deck. Search your deck for two Prism Star cards, uh, reveal them, and put them into your hand. Then shuffle your deck. Uh, in this list, he is playing three different Prism Stars, I believe. Yeah, one Deancey, and then Lusamine Prism Star and Beast Energy Prism Star. So three targets for this uh, for this Lizia. And Lusamine Prism Star is really cool. It's a new card coming out in the new set in November. Uh, you can only play this card if your opponent has exactly pre three cr three prize cards remaining. During your opponent's next turn, prevent all damage from your opponent's Pokemon's attacks uh, done to all of your Ultra Beast Pokemon. That is really, really powerful. That This is a game-winning card right here. But it's one of those Ultra Beast kind of cards where you have to have exactly the amount of, uh, of prizes remaining. Oh, your opponent has to have exactly three prize cards remaining. But if they do, I mean, you can start guaranteeing yourself a victory. I mean, you could use Buzzwool GX uh, to take a knockout. And, uh, well, first use your Lusamine. Use Lusamine Prism Star and then protect your Buzzwools and your, your uh, baby Buzzwools from damage on the next turn then come in with a knuckle impact next turn guzma into something else knuckle impact for game i mean yeah, that is a really really good card it's very situational but it's a good thing it's a one of anyway because it's a prism star but all right let's go on we got four ultra ball four custom catcher this is going to be a really cool card too uh you can play two custom cu catcher cards from your hand at once so it's kind of like uh, your puzzle of times that are gone sad face uh, if you played one, draw cards so you have three in your hand, so it's like an Orangaroo. Or if you played two, switch one of your opponent's bench Pokemon with their active. It becomes a Lysander or a Pokemon Catcher um, uh, for some of those older players that, that played a while back. But yeah, Custom Catcher is going to be really, really cool, and I think it's going to have a big sh uh, a big effect on the format. Uh, you probably play a lot, see a lot of Zorark decks playing Custom Catcher as well. Um, yeah, it's going to be a really good card. Target down whatever Pokemon you want and keep your Pokemon in the active. Really, really strong play. Uh, we got three B-Strings, two Switches, four Choice Band, and three Brooklet Hill. And to end off the energies, we got seven Fighting Energy, four Unit Energy, and one Beast Energy Prism Star. This is a really, really cool deck. I think Buzzle's going to be really strong next format. Uh, Buzz, uh, let's see, Zorak, Lycan Rock. Let's see Ultra Necrozma Malamar, because that seems to be a very popular deck right now. Uh, four Ink A, three Malamar, three Ultra Necrozma GX, one Giratina. This Giratina is going to be very, very good once it comes out. Um, it has the Distortion Door attack or ability. Once during your turn, if this card is in your discard pile, you may put it onto your bench. Then put one damage counter on two of your opponent's bench Pokemon. So you get to revive this from the discard pile, plus a little chip damage on your opponent's Pokemon. Really, really cool. Uh, then you've got the attack Shadow Impact for Psychic Psychic Colorless. Does 130 damage, then put four damage counters on one of your Pokemon. That's kind of bad, but um, uh, it looks like this deck is, I mean, this card is doing very, very well. Uh, a version of this deck with Malamar got first place at this tournament, and we'll take a look at that here in just a little bit. You've got a three retreat, we uh, weakness of darkness because it is a ghost type, and resistance to fighting. And then one Necrozma GX, because you are running Malamar. And then two Tapu Lele GX. We got four Cynthia, four Lily, four Guzma, one Acerola, four Mysterious Treasure, uh, just that super consistency, three Ultra Ball, three Acrobike, uh, three B-Strings, one Rescue Stretcher, two Choice Band, and two Altar of the Moon. And then to end off, nine Psychic Energies, three Metal Energies, and one Beast Energy Prism Star, and one Unit Energy, which is uh, Lightning, Psychic, and Metal. So yeah, that's pretty cool too. 
That'll be a really strong deck. Ultra Necrozma is not going anywhere, guys. It's going to stay around for a while. Now, on to the top four. These are all really cool decks. Um, this one is Alolan Exeggutor and Sceptile GX. Plus, the uh, the non-GX Sceptile makes an appearance as well. The one that stops all Ultra Beasts. Which, I think this is going to be a very relevant card coming up. Because Ultra Beasts aren't going anywhere for a while. We've got Bacephalon GX. We've got Buzzwool GX. We've got Baby Buzzwool. And this Sceptile can make it to where your opponents take no attacks from any of your opponent's Ultra Beasts, as long as they have a Grass Energy attached. And then, you've got your Sceptile GX, who just moves those energies around for you with the Leaf Cyclone attack. 130 damage for two Grass Energies. Move one Grass Energy from this Pokemon to one of your bench Pokemon. So, put a Grass Energy on a Pokemon that, does, that doesn't have one on there already, and if you already have this uh, the non-GX Sceptile set up, they take no damage from your opponent's Ultra Beast, which is really, really cool. Uh, this Sceptile is really interesting because you also have this Grovile here with the uh, Sunshine da Grace ability. Once during your turn, you search your deck for one Grass Pokemon, reveal it, and put it into your hand, then shuffle your deck. This is a, a reprint ability from an old Gabite that had the same thing, except you search your deck for a Dragon Pokemon once per turn. So, God, yeah, that's just so consistent. You get one of these Grovile's down. Let's say you're playing a 4-4 line, 4-4-4 uh, of all of the Sceptile line. If you get one Trico evolved, you can search your deck for all the other Groviles, evolve them, and with the last one, search your deck for the Sceptile for next turn. That would be really, really cool. I've been interested in Sceptile for a while, and uh, I'm going to eventually get that deck profile up for you guys, so y'all stay tuned for that. It won't be for a couple months. <laughs> but uh, anyway, the main attacker of this deck was the non-GX Alolan Exeggutor. And we already have this card out. It is in a structure deck. And it's a really cool Pokemon. It's got 160 HP for a stage 1. That is a lot of HP. Uh, with the Tropical Shake attack for 1 grass, grass Energy. Does 20 damage plus 20 more damage for every type of basic energy card in your discard pile. And you can't add more than 100 damage in this way. So for 1 energy, you hit for 120. As long as you have, uh, what, 6, I believe? No, 5. You just need 5 uh, energies in the discards. So you can have a Grass plus all these other one of, uh, 1 of energies in the discard pile. And hit for 120 damage for 1 energy, which is really cool. Um, 4 Execute, 4 Alone Executor, and then... Two Trico, two Grovile, one Sceptile GX, and one non GX Sceptile. Really cool. And then we got two of the uh, non GX Shuckle. This non GX Shuckle will be a really good in a lot of decks, and it's kind of like a pseudo battle compressor for your energy cards. It's uh, got the ability freshly squeezed. Once during your turn, when you play this card from your hand onto the bench, you may search your deck for up to three basic energy, discard them, then shuffle your deck. So, like a battle compressor for your basic energies. Uh, you can uh, use this with this Alolan Exeggutor to do more damage. Search your deck for like a, what do they play, uh, search your deck for a metal, a fighting, and a water. Put them straight into the discard pile. Then you can play another one next turn and get the fire, fairy, and grass in the discard pile. And your Alolan Exeggutor is ready to go off. He's ready to hit for those high numbers for one single energy, which is really, really cool. Then they play a 1-1 line of Fomantis Lorantis, and this is the Lorantis promo with the Sunny Day ability that says uh, your grass type and fire type Pokemon do 20 more damage with their attacks. So then you make your Alolan Exeggutor, Alolan Exeggutor hit for 140. Choice Band gives you 170. You're taking out things like Taipu Lele. So yeah. And then uh, to end off the list, guys, they have a single copy of Ditto Prisma Star. Really, really good. Like I said, it's making a, making an appearance in all of these Stage 1 decks. Uh, uh, Ditto Prism Stars could definitely be a Prism Star to get your hands on. And off to the trainers, we got four Cynthia's, four Lilies, two Sightseer, which is going to be a really cool draw support in the next four or in the next set. Draw cards so you have five in your hand. Before drawing, you may discard as many cards from your hand as you like. So it's kind of like a, you can think of it as kind of a pseudo Professor Sycamore replacement. You don't get to draw seven, but you could draw up to five. But it's kind of a pick and choose. You could, if you have an Ultra Ball in your hand, you don't want to discard. Don't discard it. Just draw one less card than you normally would. So, yeah, Sightseer is going to be a really cool card. Two Guzma, one Tate and Liza, four Netball. Uh, Netball, we saw this in the other deck profile, but um, it's an item card 
Let you search your deck for one basic grass Pokemon or one basic grass energy, reveal it and put it into your hand, then shuffle your deck. Really cool for getting those executes and those tricos set up, even your shuckles into your hand so you can uh, discard those energies. Really, really cool card. Uh, three Ultra Ball, two Rescue Stretcher, um, let's see, two Choice Band, and four Shrine of Punishment. So this is another Shrine deck. No Tapu Lele, as you can see in the deck list. And then to end off the energies, guys, seven Grass, then one Metal, one Fighting, one Water, one Fire, and one Fairy Energy. Pretty, pretty cool. It's been a really strong deck. Uh, the next deck is a Buzzwool Lycanroc and Alolan Ninetales. And we'll go through this one quickly since we already did look at a Buzzwool Lycanroc. Uh, well, a Buzzwool Ninetales. But this one also plays Lycanroc, which is really, really cool. Uh, you got your Deancey in here as well. Uh, four Buzzwool GX. No Baby Buzzwool, interesting old, interestingly enough. But uh, you do have the Deancey and three Tapu Leles. Plus... Four Cynthia's, four Guzmas, three Kakuis for that extra damage, two Lilies, one Lizia, another Lizia's in here, just like in our last uh, the last deck profile we looked at, uh, deck list, excuse me, four Ultra Ball, three Beast Ring, one Field Blower, three Choice Band, three Escape Boards. Escape Board is going to be really big because uh, people are looking for things to get around not having Float Stone anymore because Floatstone was such a big card last format. And a skateboard can work in some ways, especially for things like Buzzwool GX that do have a two retreat cost. It's better to discard one energy than two. So uh, a skateboard could work in place of Floatstone, but you know if they replant, replanted Floatstone, everybody would put it in their deck. And then uh, three copies of Brooklet Hill. And to end off the deck, it was uh, nine copies of Fairy Energy or Fighting Energy. Three copies of the unit energy with Fighting Dark and Fairy, and one Beast Energy Prism Star. Now to the top two, guys. This is another deck I'm really excited for, which is Bacephalon GX and then Naganadel, the non-GX version. So Bacephalon GX is really cool. Um, it can deal massive amounts of damage. Uh, you've got the uh, first attack, well, let's, let's look at the stats first. 180 HP, just like Rayquaza. Uh, weakness to water, no resistance, and a 2 retreat cost. Then we've got the burst burner attack for a uh, fire, for single fire energy. Your opponent's active Pokemon is now confused and burned. Pretty good disruption attack uh, if you have to go and use it on your first turn, if you go second. And then you've got the attack startle head for 50 damage times. You can put as many fire energies from your Pokemon in play into the Lost Zone as you like. This attack does 50 damage for each card put into the Lost Zone in that way. That is amazing. You you do lose all your energies to the Lost Zone, so you got to kind of be careful uh, and pick and choose where you use this attack. But, I mean, you discard 4, and then you are hitting for 200 damage. That's a lot of damage. Bacephalon may be the new Ho-Oh. But yeah, then you got Burst GX. Discard one of your prize cards. Uh, if that is an energy card, attach it to one of your Pokemon in play. Pretty strong, pretty strong. And then it pairs with, uh, well, it runs Poipole. And you have to run Poipole because you have to evolve into this new non-GX Naganadel. And it's a really cool Pokemon. 130 HP, uh, a one retreat cost, a weakness to Psychic, as most poison types are weak to Psychic. And then with the ability Charge Up, which allows this deck to uh, to deal so much damage. Once during your turn, you may attach a basic energy from your discard pile to this Pokemon. For each Naganadel you have set up, you can attach a basic energy. If you have three set up, as he runs in this deck, he runs a 4-3 line of Naganadel. If you have all three set up, you're hitting for a, at least 150 damage each turn. And that's not even counting if you discard one of the energies attached to your Bacephalon. That is pretty insane. Really, really strong. And then he's even got a decent attack. Sorry, I didn't look at that. We've got uh, three colorless energies. Turning poison does 80 damage plus. If you have exactly three prize cards remaining, this attack does 80 more damage. That's 160, 190 with a choice band. Pretty strong non GX attacker. Then we got two copies of Tapu Lele GX. Four copies of Sightseer to get those fire energies into the discard in order to attach them with Naganadel. Uh, we've got three Cynthia's, two Guzma's, one Lily. One Kiawe, that's pretty cool, in order to get those energies into play uh, on the first turn. Kiawe onto Bacephalon or even Naganadel and start attacking with it. Um, that would be really, really cool. 
Uh, one Plumeria, just another way to get those energies into the discard, plus disrupting your opponent at the same time. Discard two cards from your hand if you do discard an energy uh, from one of your opponent's Pokemon. Pretty strong. Uh, three Acrobikes, again, uh, with the uh, discarding energy to the discard pile. Um, two Mysterious Treasure, one Rescue Stretcher, one Choice Band, uh, two Ultra Space, and one Heat Factory Prism Star. This is going to be another really cool Prism Star card for those fire decks. Uh, once during your each player's turn, that turn or that player may discard a card from their hand to draw three cards. So it's kind of like uh, Scorched Earth, but a little more powerful. And then while this card is in play, whenever your opponent plays a supporter or item card from their hand, prevent all effects of that card done to this card. So the only way to get rid of these new Prism Star stadiums is to use a stadium of your own. Uh, you can't use Field Blower. You can't use uh, things like Bonnie to get rid of them. Uh, you can't even use the new uh, Faba uh, supporter card that's coming out, which is kind of like uh, uh, Zerosic, but it sends them to the Lost Zone instead. But uh, not even that. You can use Pokemon attacks like the new White Koream, the non-GX that is coming out, uh, that discards a stadium in play, or even Gyarados GX uh, with his attack that discards stadiums. You can use Pokemon, Pokemon attacks and your own stadiums, but no items or supporters to discard them. Um, and then off to the energies, guys, pretty basic. 16 Fire Energies and 1 Beast Energy Prism Star. And that is the second place deck. But a lot of people are saying that this Bicephalon deck may be the best deck in the format once Lost Thunder comes out. Because um, it got second place in the Masters Division. First place in the, uh, the Senior Division and first place in the Junior Division. So it is the deck that consistently got a top cut in all three of the uh, different divisions of this tournament. And the winning deck for this tournament, guys, was uh, a Malamar and Giratina deck. And this is another Shrine deck, but it only plays one Shrine, oddly enough. Uh, but let's take a look at it here. We got four Inkays, four Malamars, naturally. Uh, two Tapu Kokos with that Flying Flip and the Free Retreat. And then this Giratina is making another appearance. It's really, really good, especially if it gets knocked out. You can just put it right back into play and start dealing some little damage to your opponent's Pokemon. Really cool. It's kind of like a built-in Shrine of Punishment attack on itself, but it can also deal that damage to those uh, non-GXs as well. Uh, you've got two copies or one copy of Onyx, and this is going to be really cool in this deck too because you can charge it up with your Malamars and then one-shot Zoroarks because Zoroarks not going anywhere, guys. Especially with Elm's Lecture coming out in the next four, or in the next uh, in the next set. It's like a, a Bridget replacement. I mean, they lost Bridget. That was probably the biggest hit that Zorark took, but they're getting it right back in November. So, uh, search your deck for three basic Pokemon, or three Pokemon with 60 HP or less, put them into your hand. That's Zerua, 60 HP. But this comes in, and it can one-shot those Zoraks. But the bad news is Zorark can come back and one-shot him, but uh, you can get that surprise knockout that your opponent wasn't really expecting. Uh, one Necrozma GX to use that prismatic burst plus black ray could be really really uh, really effective in here, in here as well one shining Arceus this is really cool and uh, it has a really cool ability called fabled defense that says uh, as long as this Pokemon is your active Pokemon none of your bench Pokemon take any damage from your opponent's attacks um, really really cool and then ultimate arrow for four colorless energies does 30 damage to each of your opponent's bench Pokemon really really cool like a stronger version of, of Tapu Koko's attack You've got one Lunala Prism Star and one Tapu Lele GX. Four copies of Cynthia, three Lilies, three Guzmas, two Titan Lizas, two TV Reporter, which is really cool. I haven't seen this in any decks lately. Um, uh, any decks at all, to be honest. But it has uh, three, draw three cards, then discard a card from your hand. If you have no cards in your deck, you can't play this card. So you have to be able to draw the three cards in order to use TV Reporter. Uh, but that's really cool if you have like a, uh, a psychic energy in hand you need in the discard pile. Uh, you could draw three cards and discard that one. It's kind of like a trade. Um, okay, so one Judge, four Mysterious Treasure, three Nest Ball, two Ultra Ball, two Rescue Stretcher, four Spell Tag, which is going to be pretty cool in the next set as well. Uh, it's a Pokemon tool. If the psychic Pokemon this card is attached to gets knocked out by damage from your opponent's Pokemon's attacks, Put four damage counters onto that Pokemon in any, or onto your opponent's Pokemon any way you like. So it's kind of like bursting balloon, except it doesn't get. Uh, well, I guess it technically does get discarded whenever, uh, whenever your opponent 
uh, KOs you. But you get to uh, disperse four damage counters wherever you want on the field. So this is like a shrine deck and also like a like a, a spread kind of trap deck. Like uh, you're trapping your opponent into knocking you out. And if they knock you out, they're going to take some damage and then you can get some key knockouts there. And then one copy of Shrine of Punishment, one of the biggest cards in the format right now. And to end off the deck, guys, we got 10 Psychic Energies and 2 Double Colorless Energies. These decks are really cool. I think they're really interesting. And this gives us a glimpse into the future to see what kind of decks we can, we can, we can expect to see in the next format. I mean, some of these decks, out of 1,235 uh, Masters, you know these decks that got top 32 are going to be good. You got some of these decks uh, that I didn't even expect to make a big showing. Uh, Zorak Garb, I, I pretty much expected to stay in the format for a while. Zorak Macargo is really, 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 really cool. If we could see that deck list, we'd look at it. It probably has the GX plus the non-GX in there. Um, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, Zorak Weavile is a pretty cool deck. Um, let's see, here's that Lost March I was telling you about, but there is no deck list. I would look at this if I could, but I cannot. Um, some more Ultra Necrozma, another Malamar with Giratina, uh, even Naganadel Stagataga Beast Box is making an appearance here too. Um, this is really cool. Uh, there's a lot of cool decks I did not expect to make it in the top cut, and they did. So yeah, Naganadel was a deck I was interested in. My buddy Chris plays this deck, and he was super happy when he saw that. Um, the Decidueye is making a comeback. These Stage 2 decks are going to love the Solo One Nine Tails, but. Y'all let me know what you think in the comment section below. Do you like this video? Do you like these kind of tournament report videos? I know this uh, this deck list has been out, or this uh, this tournament list has been out for a couple weeks. I'm kind of late in the in getting this video posted up, but um, I wanted to make sure everything ran correctly on my on my laptop here and uh, start doing these like uh, whenever the tournaments get get posted and uh, let you guys know what the top cut was at these tournaments. But y'all let me know in the comments section below if you like this kind of video. Um, be sure and subscribe if you're new. Uh, like and comment down below. And this is David from Scissor Explosion. And we will see you all next time.